the question is that this bill be now read a second time, and I give the call to the member for Chifley. Deputy Speaker, it is a, uh, I was going to say a pleasure, but it really isn't speaking on this bill, uh, because really what we're talking about here uh, is doing the easy, easy part of reform uh, in an area that really demands uh, something a lot more. Um, the communications minister uh, presented with what he knows after 10 years of debate about what we do on safe harbours within copyright um, failed. In fact, you know, we should probably rename this bill, not the Copyright uh, Amendment Service Providers Bill, but probably the Copyright Amendment Fifield Night Sweats Bill, because really the communications minister uh, is so fearful of undertaking reform in this space, so unable to actually get agreement uh, on the need for reform, which he knows needs to happen uh, in this area, that uh, all he'll do is promise another review and make a commitment for something to happen down the track and just hope that when that point down the track arrives to the present day, he's nowhere near it. He's hoping, by kicking the can for reform down the road, that um, we can avoid all this. Uh, this uh, legislation uh, does the right stuff. It, it promotes, obviously, the extension of safe harbours uh, to educational institutions, to libraries, to archives, key cultural institutions and those organisations assisting persons with a disability. So it's all good stuff. Um, most of the entities I've just mentioned uh, take a very conservative approach to ensure that there are copyright uh, protections uh, and ensure that um, the right thing is done by rights holders, but uh, it doesn't really go beyond that. And what does that mean? Well, what it means is that there are a whole stack of Australian firms in this area that are confronted by the spectre of costly litigation that have no comfort extended to them through this bill. It was promised we'd have a review the last time this thing was debated in this place, and I spoke strongly in favour of local firms that have that uh, legal threat hanging over them. Uh, and we had the promise of another review yet again. After all the reviews, I think there were nearly a dozen different ones that had occurred over 12 years. Uh, and this is the best we got. And the scheme, uh, you know, the, the whole issue of um, current safe harbours. Uh, this was introduced in the Australian context uh, in the, uh, the Australia-US Free Trade Agreement in 05, 05. And the scheme in that agreement was, as the minister representing uh, the Minister for Urban Infrastructure in this place is the minister representing the communications minister, uh, as he rightly outlined, the scheme in a, the Australia-US Free Trade Agreement was intended to provide an alternative to court proceedings for copyright owners where their infringing material is hosted, cached or linked by a service provider or where a provider's network services are used to infringe copyright. Now, even in that space of time, there has been massive change on the ground. Again, this was about providing an alternative to court proceedings for copyright owners, and I'll come back to this point. This was uh, uh, at a time where we did not see really the emergence of cloud-based platforms that are transforming the way we work right now in a whole range of areas, not just what we're talking about here. Um, and so this scheme is just limited to service providers in the telco sense, but it has, does absolutely nothing in terms of dealing with firms that are leveraging off cloud and providing new services and, importantly, providing uh, incomes for a range of people, bringing them together, creating an income for them all and then being able to be free of some concern that they will have uh, infringed copyright in some way. And the rights holders keep screaming. They'll always scream the more extreme elements of them, though I do know there are people in the rights holder space that recognise that times have moved on and that they do need to have a much more nuanced and up-to-date view about what to, how to manage this. This is the era of digital platforms. What used to be done in an analogue way is being replaced by digital platforms off a cloud-based platform itself. 
This is, this is changing the game. And uh, we do need to have some sort of protection. And there are some great firms here that are doing some important work in generating new income, be it for artists, be it for manufacturers, be it for printers and the like. Um, and they have no sense of comfort as a result of what the government's put forward today that they'll be looked after and that they will avoid the spectre of legal action against them. And the one that I think of most, and particularly on this day, is Redbubble, whose CEO, Martin Hosking, uh, has announced his retirement today after being with the firm since 2006 and has done some terrific work and should be celebrated for his contribution to the Australian economy. And Redbubble is a platform that allows artists an alternative mechanism for income generation where you can team up, you can get something printed uh, on a range of different material or media, uh, and you're generating income not just for the artists, but it could be a printer in Perth, a textiles manufacturer in Melbourne, an artist in Adelaide, all working and leveraging off a platform to create an income for themselves. Now, Redbubble was taken to court recently, uh, and they were taken to court uh, by Sony because it was claimed that Redbubble had, through their platform and through someone manipulating some artwork, um, that there'd been an infringement of uh, Pokemon's, Sony's uh, product, copy of, of Pokemon's copyright. And uh, he declared in favour of Sony, of Pokemon, the judge that was ruling in that case. And what was the cost? The cost of nominal damages to Redbubble was $1. $1. And the reason being is that the judge found that Redbubble had been um, responsible uh, for determining uh, the content originated by artists through its processes, protocols and arrangements with artists. And in finding indirect infringement, the judge found Redbubble had complete control over how its system operated and found that Redbubble had in place systems to monitor the steps taken by the users of the website and could immediately take down and remove infringing material. So they've been taking steps. The risk mitigation provided by that platform, Redbubble, had been taken into consideration by the judge and which um, then provided for that nominal uh, judgment uh, to be made. Now, Redbubble has rightly argued that safe harbours recognise in there, they made a submission to the, to the bill as it was considered by the Senate. And um, in January this year, they said that safe harbours recognise the realities for Australian platforms that host user-generated content uh, and, and provide a fair and effective process for managing infringement on user-generated content platforms, that this protection is critical for fostering innovation, absolutely right, in the Australian technology sector, and Safe Harbour would promote collaboration between all parties in the fight against infringement, absolutely, and that the limited Safe Harbour extension in the bill, applying only to the education sector and the not-for-profit sector, will be impractical, impracticable to administer. And so they made uh, all these points. Now, it's worth noting that over 90 per cent of Redbubble's revenues, this Australian firm, is from customers outside Australia. So an Australian firm provides a digital platform and is generating income where 90 per cent of the revenues are from outside Australia. Its website attracts over 20 million visitors per month. There are 10 million artworks and designs displayed on the website from over 600,000 artists. Artists have earned over 100 million for the site, from the site, 100 million, with over 10 per cent of this going to Australian artists. And the income that they are earning is growing at around 50 per cent a year, a phenomenal growth rate. So what they're saying is, well, if we've got mechanisms in place to make sure that we um, deal with copyright infringement quickly, if courts have looked at our process and after considering, considering um, what are argued infringements, they then issue nominal judgments of just a dollar because of the fact that Redbubble has set itself up in that way. Why is it that we have to still have the legal spectre hanging over them, the sword hanging over them? And it's because this bill doesn't provide protection for commercial activities that are providing a platform for artists to get new forms of income along with a range of other businesses in this country. Now, some of the extreme right holder arguments are, well, if Redbubble can't survive here, they can shove off. They can go off overseas. 
And is this what the Jobs and Growth Government is going to allow to happen? Because Redbubble could quite easily move. They could move offshore if we don't have a legal framework that allows businesses to operate here. Redbubble and its like, its, uh, its other um, firms of its like, like 99 Designs, for example, Patrick Llewellyn, who I managed to share a push-up competition with in Oakland, California, but that's a story for another time. Um, uh, 99 Designs, another great Australian firm, Envato, all of them. Why, if people will say, well, you know, they managed one legal challenge, they're fine. They'll just have to stump up to a court. No, they should not have to face the prospect and fund legal challenges that are put to them by others who just want to run those businesses into the ground. There should be a legal framework here to protect them. And for those rights holders, the extreme ones, who say, well, Redbubble can, can basically go offshore, if they have to shut up shop in Australia, they can you know, rack off overseas, this is crazy. Because what will happen, as I said before, in an era of digital platforms using cloud to provide these services, what happens is Redbubble moves overseas and still provides the same services that right holders get upset with still provides the same services. But what it means here is that the platform denies the whole stack of technology-based jobs that are here. They get snuffed out straight away. Redbubble moves. We, we lose an economic opportunity onshore, all because of the purity, the extreme purity of the rights holders that say, we will just maintain existing arrangements, no changes, no ifs or buts which is just nuts. I cannot believe we've got to that state in this country. Some of the rights holders say I'm anti those copyright protections and want to stop the ability of artists earning income or authors or whatever. That's rubbish. I think we need to find a sensible middle ground on this that protects artists' incomes and not just protects them, gives them an opportunity to grow, that they're not just reliant on grant schemes administered by government to survive, but that they find new avenues the income growth. Again, out of $100 million, 10 per cent of it is generated by Australian artists. And with a growth rate of 50 per cent per year, that's huge. So we've got to be able to protect Australian artists and find new incomes for them, but also, if we're serious about promoting Australian innovation, provide a, a, a area, room to move for these firms to grow. That absolutely should be the case. And no one who says they are pro-innovation can argue or be timid or be quiet in this debate. Because if you're arguing you're pro the smarts of Australian industry or you're arguing that we should see those jobs be created more and more here and that we want to see digitally um, skilled people apply their skills to help firms grow, if you are timid, meek, quiet in this argument, you are anti-innovation. You are anti the notion that we can diversify our economic base through new, smarter firms emerging because you didn't have the guts to stand up against the, the sort of fevered exclamations of some of the extreme right holders in this debate because you couldn't find middle ground. We've got to be pro artist and pro smarts in this debate, pro smart firms that are providing opportunities for others to create an income. But in this debate, because the communications minister was unable, didn't even, it did not have either the wit, the wherewithal or the courage to come up with an alternate way to extend safe harbour protections for great Australian firms, that's what we're missing out on. It's unacceptable, and especially from those opposite who harp on about jobs and growth like they've got no other, no other thought in their mind or no other argument that they can express. This should be completely different. And in, my final, uh, in the final time I have left, I would like to say thank you to Martin Hosking for the fact that he has followed through on his vision uh, with his firm. He's got uh, capable people that are taking over from him and exceptionally talented people in that firm in Melbourne that I've visited. Martin Hosking is exact, exactly the type of person that we should be patting on the back, uh, opening up opportunity uh, for young Australians and creative Australians here in this country. And I hope that at some point, uh, when he looks back on the successes that he has been able to achieve in this space 
at some point he'd be able to savour a legislative success that will enable other firms like his to grow and to thrive in this country instead of offshore. I thank the member for his uh, contribution. The question is that the bill be now read a second time. Uh, oh, does the minister wish to speak? Uh, well, I'm about to put the question. What's his other no, You're going to sum up, yes. Minister? Okay. I uh, give the call to the minister. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I rise to sum up debate on the Copyright Amendment Service Providers Bill 2017, which is another important step in reforming Australia's copyright laws to better facilitate the delivery of fundamental and important digital services to Australians. Now, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I should make it clear that this bill is not about cyber security issues, so the contribution by the mem member for Canberra was rather mystifying. Uh, nor is it particularly clear why the Shadow Attorney-General says that Labor supports this legislation, while the member for Chifley criticises this legislation. Uh, in effect, the member for Chifley is saying what the technology and innovation sector wants to hear, and the Shadow Attorney-General is telling rights holders, such as the music industry, what they want to hear. This is typical Labor, walking both sides of the street, divided and confused on what their policy is. What this bill does do, Madam Deputy Speaker, is to extend the current safe harbour scheme in the Copyright Act 1968 to institutions in the educational, cultural and disability sectors. The bill provides regulatory certainty for these institutions by setting out the steps they should take to prevent copyright infringements when they provide important digital services such as internet access, directory services, hosting social media content or caching user services. It also ensures that these institutions receive protection from liability where these services are provided on the institution's behalf by a third party, such as a cloud service provider. Schools, universities, libraries, museums, archives and organisations assisting those with a disability will have a reduced risk of liability when individuals use their networks or services in a way that infringes copyright. These institutions will therefore have greater flexibility in the way they provide vital online services and support to Australians. For instance, the bill will help nearly <coughs> 9,500 primary and secondary schools and 41 universities across Australia to more confidently provide digital services to 3.5 million school students and over 1.3 million higher education students. It will assist just over 1,630 public libraries to provide essential services to millions of Australians with confidence. I welcome the cooperation of the opposition and the crossbench in facilitating passage of this non-controversial bill. After nearly 15 years of debate on safe harbour reform, this bill represents the first attempt to push beyond the polarised views of stakeholders and will deliver much needed and beneficial reform. I would like to thank all involved. I commend the bill to the House. I thank the Minister. And the question is that this bill be now read a second time. I'd like to put that question. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against no. The ayes have it. And uh, I call on the clerk to read the next item. Second reading a bill for an act to amend the Copyright Act 1968 and for related purposes. Is leave granted for a uh, third reading to be moved immediately? Leave is granted. Thank you. And I give the call to the minister.